Brilliant. So let's sort of like move on now to your, your uh, role, probably voluntary. I, I'm guessing you didn't apply for the position, but uh, I, I, I've been involved with this football club a couple, of to- a, a couple of years now. And I sort of like got to go to as virtually every away game. And, I, and I've seen lots of other pitches that other people play on. And I see a bowling green at Stratford and I see rutted fields in other areas it's a total credit to you in Jordan for the efforts that you're putting in there so tell us a little bit more about that then historically when the ground was built in 2008 literally from we played our first game on a Saturday in February against Barwell first game down here got beat 1-0 I was managing the ladies team we were playing on there on the Sunday it rained overnight, it got called off. Brand new pitch, second game to be on it, didn't rain. And you thought, it's all not right, it's not, something's not right here. And in fairness to the previous board of directors, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they didn't oversee the way the pitch was put down. The reality was, it was badly put down. It didn't drain. From day one, it never drained. And I think they must have spent, I've seen, so many different people coming here trying to fix a problem. I used to get involved in it, trying to get games on, as we all, you know, we'd have volunteers like 20 on a Saturday morning down here trying to get fork in the pitch, trying to get games on once we went past November. The, from, from, from August till the end of October, the pitch always looked fantastic. But once the weather moved in and the water table come up, it, that was it, the season had gone. And, you know, we had game after game off. Um, so historically we just we just had these issues all the time and you know everything was tried on this pitch but nobody really got to the bottom of why right the I, I got involved in Sid uh, Sid Keenan who was president him and him and his brother Liam they used to come in once twice a week had a great big Toro mower, fairway mower, mower the pitch, tied it all up, get it marked out, and all that sort of stuff. Is that a petrol or a diesel mower? A diesel mower. Thank you. I'm not going there. So, and and they were they were volunteers. They were doing it with the best intentions. But we, once the weather moved in, you couldn't get the mower on the pitch because it would just sink basically. So, when Sid. Who, who's, who, who did it until his like mid seventies? Obviously, then retired from the football club. Um, I said, "Well, I'll look after it until we can get it sorted out." I was fortunate to get involved with a couple of people who came and did some work here, and then started to pick their brains. What do you think's wrong with it? How do we fix it? Stuff like that. Um, and bit by bit, we started getting to the to the bottom of the problem. And the problem was actually eighteen inches down, not. We always used to treat the top of the pitch. The problem was 18 inches down. It was just just solid cap. So um, I took over doing that. We we did we, we had a couple of good years weather-wise where we had a couple of mild winters and we got away with it a couple of times. But the the under the fundamental problem hadn't gone away. We had a conversation with Jed and somebody recommended that you could get this machine in a terrain aeration machine that drills a metre down into the ground and would break it all up and put a permanent hole through the capping at the bottom and since we had that done the pitch at least now the water goes through albeit you still got a problem on the top so I was learning a lot off people and mostly as Jed would say well, you only mow the grass so I was mowing the grass marking it out making it look as best as you can um, and then obviously COVID came along. Now, that was quite an opportunity in a way for me because I could come down here and look after the pitch every day. And the first six weeks of COVID in April and May, the weather was fabulous. Uh, and because the pitch wasn't being played on, we had a good chance to really get stuck into it and, and do it. And bit by bit, we started to fix the problems. I actually decided to do my Ground Management Association exams online during COVID, which I passed, 
Um, and I just got a bit more knowledge about it. And the, the great thing about this industry is that groundsmen are more than happy to share knowledge with you. It's one of the, f normally if you go to another football club, they'll, they'll all, they want to keep things like that. But groundsmen are more than happy. I mean, don't get me wrong, not all of them give you good information, but um, a lot of them are quite happy to sort of like give you ideas, give you uh, some assistance as to what to do, what products to use and stuff like that. So basically, I've just self-taught myself really with, with, the, with the help of a lot of people who you can pick a phone up to and ask them a question. So like, I can't, we, uh, last year we had a really weird, like in November, the temperature went up to like 22 degrees and all of a sudden the grass started going a strange colour. And I, I took a photograph of it and sent it to someone and said, what's that? And he went, oh, it's a disease that's coming because normally all of that bacteria dies in the winter, but it's gone hot and it's all go, come out again. So you have to get it sprayed and stuff like that. And you just pick all this stuff up. And it's, it's for somebody, I've got a slightly analytical mind. I mean, my wife will tell you, at home, I've always had stripes in the lawn. You know, even 25 years ago, when I'd mow the lawn, it looked like Wimbledon. Because that's, I just like that. So doing this really was just a bit of an extension. It's just a big garden, isn't it, really? All right then, how come you went up and down last week and rather look across the sides on this striping? Up and down? Yeah, you went goal to goal instead of uh, across the sides. Um, because you don't want to give the linesman an hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, did they, I mean, if the linesman's giving decisions based on how straight I cut the pitch, that's a bit of a worry, isn't it? <laughs> Especially if we've had a couple of glasses of wine before we do it. <clears throat> no, that was, that was just purely trying to tidy the pitch up. And I didn't, I hand mowed the middle of the pitch so they didn't put the weight on it to compact the ground. Okay. I That's a technical things, reason for it. I, I, I <clears throat> notice these things you see. You do, aren't you? You do. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so th you, you've, got, you've got your holes in your ground for a metre down and stuff like that, and it seemed to have worked. Um, but you're playing th at least three games a week on, on that pitch. It's still holding up. <clears throat> is, that, is there a danger of overplaying on it? Well, yeah, I mean, we have overplayed on it. We always have. I mean, like last year, we played 83 games on it. I think the year before was, even with COVID, we got 55 in. Um, and that's that's the main problem, is, is, is that every time you play a game on it, it com it's compacting the ground. So you've got to try and find a way of getting the air back into it and opening it up. But once you get into the winter, you can't start really putting machines on it because you're actually doing more damage than you're actually trying to fix. So... Um, yeah, the, the volume of games. The problem is this year, I mean, this has been the wettest winter for 50 years, they reckon, around here. I mean, that the river here has been at the top. I mean, I came here this, today, the fields, the water just pouring off the fields again. It's just like, I mean, I've never, I mean, even the golf course, which never closes, I think they've been closed nine days this year, unheard of, for rain next door. But you haven't had any football matches off. Well, we have we have not oh, first, first team. we have not a first team, team game. Yeah. We have we I mean like the youth team is supposed to play tonight, but you can probably hear the rain battering down on the roof again. It's poured down all day. The the pitch does drain okay, but because of the volume of game, it's just a bit slow. So if you've got if you've got a mill of rain coming down an hour and it's only going away at half a mill, it takes overnight for the water to go. So like Tuesday night, FC Stratford was supposed to play on it. Five o'clock, the pitch looked fantastic. Quarter to seven, you could have swum on it because it absolutely battered down. And, it, and by the next morning, it had gone. But at the moment, it's the surface of the pitch is, and that's the thing we're going to do this year. We're going to fix the top of the pitch. We know what we're going to do now. So, come, come, I mean, May is going to be the end, and then probably July, July we, we customarily have probably 10 games on it for all home game pre-season friendly. So you've got from May to July, so are you, are you going to take the top off of it or what's, what's the plan? Well, we've got three, we're looking at three options at the moment. Um, I think to use a phrase that we're going to smash the granny out the top of the pitch, but basically the, the ideal solution would be to take the top inch off the pitch, which would get rid of all the black bacteria, um, put about 120 tonne of sand back, and then, but you have to stay off it eight weeks. So if we do it first week in May, you're not playing a game on it till second week in July. Right. And so that that's that's one solution. There are a couple of others. It's it's cost. It's not cheap. Um, and 
you've just got to weigh up the balance as to what you're going to get out of it. Okay. So big, big plans as well. It's just to maintain the pitch to keep us going whichever level we're in next season. Yeah, I, I think I still think that our pitch. I mean, obviously, it's it's it's, it's easy to say that if we if we play less games on the pitch, the pitch would be better. That's a fact. If it didn't rain, like six inches of in 10 days all the time, the pitch would be better. So the, you can never really say, I mean, most groundsmen will do a plan. I'm gonna do this on this day of the week. We're gonna put that fertilizer on that week. We're gonna do this, this week. We're gonna cut that, we're gonna do that. But the weather just completely kills you. So like, you know, I, I've, I've stopped, I haven't even bothered doing it this year. I just adapt to what I can do when the conditions let me to do it. So, you know, me and Jordan will have floodlights on some nights, battering it in, because we know it's going to stay dry till tomorrow, and then the rain's coming the next day, but at least you get the chance to get it done. Yeah, and, and lots of times you've had to stay late to put covers out so that oh, you can try and predict... Uh, covers. Putting yeah. them out's not so bad, to take yeah. them off. Um, we, we had one game we got on, which was a real achievement, where we had fantastic... I mean, we had... We put an appeal out for volunteers to come in and take the covers off and early in the morning. And I think we had 25 people come down. It was fantastic. We'd never got the game on. Yeah. Because the problem with putting covers on the pitch, they're covered in water. And you've got to squeegee them off before you can take the covers off. And that's physical. It's, you know, they're heavy and it's, it's hard work. Um, but from like 7 o'clock in the morning on the Saturday, and then I think about referee turned up at half one and he went, oh, he said, I thought you might have a problem with this. He said, it's fine. I said, yeah, well, you wouldn't have said that at 7 o'clock this morning, but... Yeah, but you you know it, it it's great that people wanted the game on, and were prepared to. I mean you know, and it wasn't just it was like every, all parts of the club people turned up. It was great, absolutely great. I mean, just shows us show how the Correct. clubs clubs yeah. moved on, and people want to come and actually have so that they can see a game of football on and yeah. at, at a decent level. Yeah, um, and the most important thing, as I said to the players as they walked off the pitch after the warm ups, is you better win after we've done this, <laughs> and they did, which was good. So you're 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 obviously you've got you're going to be putting great big tons of stand and stuff on that in, in possibly in the summer and all that sort of thing. You know, you've got mowers which are petrol, diesel mowers and all that sort of thing. You must be an expert on driving virtually any sort of vehicle. No. No? No. Not, not even mini diggers? Oh, mini diggers I'm cracking with, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> is that to drives RS? Yeah. <laughs> He's not biting, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm not biting. Apparently, there's a lady down the road who was, who got a new drive. <laughs> Mark Bigley, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Pleasure.